from sunny Corpus Christi, Texas, you're watching TV3. Welcome to TV3. I'm Type V3, your host, and on this week's episode, we'll be covering robots, Rio bots, girl robots, I bought some robots, and answering your questions about robots in the feedback section. All right, so last time I did one of these TV3 videos, I said that normal service would return, and then I proceeded to disappear for a couple weeks, so I'm not gonna do that again, and let's just pretend like it never happened, okay? Cool, awesome, let's get on with it. <laughs> First up in the news is a story from one of my favorite companies, Sentinel, and they have finally given a price and release date on their 112th Mosspedia ride armor, and this toy looks fantastic. At a cool 20,000 yen coming out in January, you yourself can have this amazing man on bike, bike into man armor toy. Now, personally, I don't know that much about Mosspedia. I just know that they have some really cool robot and mecha designs going on here. I believe in the work that Realbot's able to put out. You know, I love a lot of their stuff. Of course, it's more expensive than I would like to be paying for a toy of this size, but at the end of the day, they make quality stuff, and I have no doubt that this is going to be a quality figure. The next announcement comes from Bandai, and it's one that I'm particularly excited about. It's the next release in their Metal Build series that isn't a Gundam. They're finally doing the ARX-7 Arbalest from Full Metal Panic. Now, if you know about Full Metal Panic, then you'll know that Metal Build previously released the Lavatane a couple of years ago. In fact, I have it, and there's a review of it up on my channel somewhere. And this was actually the precursor to that arm slave. This is actually the one that appears in the anime, the one that most Full Metal Panic fans know about. It's the one that I personally like more, and I can't believe that it took this long for this mecha to be made. Uh, needless to say, this is something that I'm definitely going to be picking up. I don't believe there's an actual price or release date, but it is a metal build. You can expect it to be quite pricey and hard to buy, but nevertheless, I'm going to try my hardest to get this when it does come out. Bandai also had a small little tease for their other high-profile metal toy line, which is Soul of Shigokin, and they have hinted that they are going to be doing, actually not hinted, they've confirmed that they're doing the Soul of Chagokin Dragon Caesar, or otherwise known as the Dragon Zord. All we have here are just initial design documents, but hey, it's being made. Now, I personally skipped out on the original Megazord because of all the negative or mediocre reviews I had seen of it, but I did say that if they did make a matching Soul of Chagokin Dragon Zord, then I would go back and buy it. So, guess what I just bought on the internet today? Mm hmm. The All Japan Model and Hobby Show took place over this past weekend in Tokyo, and there was a bombshell of an announcement, which we'll get to in all due time. But first, I want to highlight some of the smaller things. First up from Aoshima, they are doing, to everyone's surprise, Persona kits. Now, the first one they're doing is kind of an expected one. It's Aegis, because Aegis is probably the most popular Persona character. She's the robot girl from Persona 3. I love her. You love her. We all love her. Great. Big deal. But the next one that they announced is from the more recent Persona 5, and it is the main character's first Persona, and that is Arsene. And this is just such a cool design. It's hard to really explain what's going on here, but I've always liked the design of this Persona. In any case, it's a cool looking model kit. The other thing they showed off is finally we have color images of their VF31 Valkyrie girl, and... At this point, just let me buy this thing already. I think it looks awesome. I, whew, man, that's everything I want. Macross, Idol, all in one, looks good. On the Gundam side of the show, there were a lot of announcements, a lot of small, little, neat things, and there's just too much to go through, so I'm only gonna highlight the two important ones. First up, my pair of Gundam girls, Fumina and Gyanko, they're back, and guess what? They got new kits, all based on their Super Fumina and their Hyper Gyanko. And the way that they display these were, I suppose, kind of hidden with a lot of caution tape, but I think a sharp eye, you could figure out what's going on. The Fumina one appears to be full armor Fumina Gundam ground type, whereas Gyanko looks to be dressed up as a Dom. And I think that's really neat. I know a lot of you guys really hate the female model kit Gundam thing, 
But I think these ones are edging a little bit closer to more mass appeal in the fact that they're dressed up as, well, a lot of popular UC suits. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how these turn out. I really do want to see what they look like in the flesh, like their entire concept. I imagine it's going to be very cool. But hey, if this doesn't do it for you, I don't blame you. Everyone has their own set of interests. But just know, I'm super digging it. Keep on giving it to me, Bandai. Oh, by the way, Still no sign of a Shia because, hey, Bandai hates you guys. <laughs> okay, I've stalled long enough. Here we go. It's the big announcement, the one we all knew was kind of coming, and it is the big Gundam release for the year. It is the Perfect Grade Exia. Yep, with the 10-year anniversary of Gundam 00, we finally have a Perfect Grade Exia. As many of you guys know, the Exia is probably my favorite mobile suit. It is finally here in Perfect Grade form. Kind of expensive, 18,000 yen for for PG Exia. I don't know. Exia doesn't seem like it's it warrants a price tag that high considering how, let's say, small the mobile suit is in comparison to ones with giant wings or whatnot. But I suppose this kit looks great. It does everything you want it to do. It's the second announcement that came with this and that there's going to be a second version of this kit called the PG Exia Lite model. Now, this is going to cost 32 thousand yen very expensive that's well above the 300 dollar mark and the reason it's so expensive is that it's going to come with an inner frame with a built-in led system and the led system will glow in multiple colors i believe it'll go blue green and red now one of the coolest things is that not only does it light up the GN drives, but it also lights up the GN power bands that go through the entire Exia mobile suit. Now, one of the reasons I love the Exia over, let's say, the Repair 2 or the Repair 3 are those GN power bands, and I feel like they never get enough attention. And finally, here we go, in perfect grade form, they're finally given the attention they deserve, and I think it looks brilliant. You know, I hate the fact that Bandai tends to charge such a ridiculous amount for what's ostensibly cheap lights. You know, I didn't get it on the Perfect Grade Unicorn because it was just a dumb price. But on this, on the Exia, on a kit I really like focusing on details that I think are super cool, I'm going to have to just jump on this. So yeah, for sure. I'm super pumped. PG Exia light model. Here I come. December. Hurry up. <laughs> All right, if you've been keeping up with the channel more recently, then you'll know that in the past couple of weeks, I managed to snag a Super Nintendo Classic Edition, and the guys over at B25 sent me the entire first wave of their Acid Rain World uh, scaled-down figures, which I think are marvelous. A little bit overpriced for what they are, but still pretty cool once you have them all together and you're playing around with them. So these are the things that you know that I got, but I did manage to pick up a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's check that out. First up is Figma Corin from Fire Emblem Fates. This of course being the main character and this is the female version. And because I played Fire Emblem Fates, both Birthright and Conquest as a girl, I was super happy when Good Smile announced that they were only going to make the girl version. I also happened to buy this from Good Smile themselves, so I did get the exclusive sword, which I have currently misplaced at the moment, so I'm going to have to find that. But yes, I am otherwise pretty stoked to have this. You know, I love Fire Emblem. She's not as cool as Lucina, but nevertheless, I won't say no to more Fire Emblem characters. Speaking of girls, on the Gundam side of things, I finally got my hands on a Super Fumina Axis Angel version, and this is, of course, Fumina dressed up as a pink angel. This is the weird one, and I think it's, well, it was on sale, and I felt like it was my responsibility as a Build Fighters fan to buy it, so here it is. Look forward to the review later this week. Hyper Gyanko is the other Gundam girl I picked up this week, and this one actually looks super interesting, the way that her shields are done, and the way that she has that sword, and I really like how her actual clothing just lines up and matches well with uh, what, with what a Gyan looks like. I think that's just a really neat way they've designed that. So I'm pretty pumped to see how this turns out. Next up is the HG Star Burning Gundam. Now this is the kit that Sei uses in GM's counterattack. And I have to admit, when this kit was first announced, I was not super hyped on it. But after seeing it in action and watching other people's reviews, I've been really stoked to get this. I've I've really turned around on it. I like the way it looks. I definitely love it more than the build burning. Whether or not I like it more than the star build strike is a different question altogether, but I think it looks cool. Can't wait to see how it comes together. And yeah, I'm always I can always use more build fighter kits and I always love getting them. 
And finally, the last kit I got is probably the one that's piqued my interest the most, and that is the GM Jimmy Jim Jim. This is, of course, the general machine that the Gundam Mafia, I can't believe that's real, use in the anime. And I really like the look of this general machine just because, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of grunt suits, but this one looks super anime. It almost looks like a hero mobile suit. And I know it comes with three heads, but the one where it's almost just like a dome, that really speaks to me. So I am probably going to build this one first uh, just because I really am pumped for it. I've never been so pumped for just, uh, you know, whatever, standard general machine. But here we are. It's 2017. Things are changing. I'm changing and I'm pumped. Build a Jimmy. <laughs> We've reached the point in the show where I pick out comments from the previous video and answer them. It's called feedback, and here we go. First one comes from a, a quabble sword. Oh man, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. I it's late and I can't really read. Hi, Type V3, and how is your day going? Well, hello back to you, and I would say my day is going pretty well. You know what? It's it's better than well. I would say over the past couple of weeks. I've been doing really good at adulting, and I'm super happy with my life at the moment, so yeah, I'm doing great. Lawrence Def Thung asks, what's your favorite robot Damashi you owned? I love the Arbalest. You know, I think I would have to agree with you, I also love the Arbalest, specifically the Lambda Driver Edition. It's the one that comes with the blue effect parts. I think that toy is fantastic. It's not too expensive, and it just does so much, and the design is very simple that you can get some great poses out of it. Also, you could stick the gun on his butt, and hey, nothing's better than that. Gun butt. Look it up. Kazuki Soji wants to know Freya Wyan or Cheryl Gnome. Also, I want to know your unbiased opinion on Mass Effect Andromeda. This is pretty easy. Cheryl Gnome by a landslide because she's just a woman, whereas Freya is a little girl. Now, as for Mass Effect Andromeda, unfortunately, I haven't finished it. I'm a big Mass Effect fan, but no, I have not finished the game yet. Other things just got uh, a hold of me, and I plan to go back to it. But from what I from, from what I've played, I like it a lot. I just wish it were an open world. I wish it were like the previous three, just a proper narrative driven game. Otherwise, I do like the mechanics, the combat's great, and all that other fun stuff too. But yeah, it didn't need to be open world. But hey, what can you do? Maybe they'll learn their lesson. This next comment isn't a question, but I had to put it in because I just loved it. Robo1234 says, Figma ruler, can't wait to measure in centimeters. So not only did you have a fantastic pun, you also measure in the correct system. Metric. Double points to you. Limerick asks, will you review any new Marvel Legends? Probably not. Here in Canada, Marvel Legends are about $30, and that's a little too pricey for me, at least for what those toys are offering. At the same time, I'm not the biggest comic book superhero person. There probably will be one or two select figures that I'll pick up at some point, but it's nothing that I ever plan to do. Jim asks, I have spotted that you removed the Saint Seiya box from your background for several weeks. I always wondered that is Saint Seiya one of Vince's guilty pleasures as well. I have zero interest in Saint Seiya, but I will show you why I have that box. Alright, so this Zenoga here is hiding the Saint Seiya box, and this actually isn't any of the figures. What this box is, is just the stand. Now what's the stand for? It's for my Sailor Moon figures because I thought they would look very pretty sitting on them. Yeah. That's it. Glenn asks, Gundam figures and toys are available long ago. How did you get into Gunpla model kits back in the day? Okay, so I live here in Toronto, Canada. Well, not in Toronto, Canada, but close enough that you could probably just say, yeah, Toronto, Canada. Anyways, Toronto has a district called Scarborough, and in Scarborough, there's a mall called Pacific Mall. If you've ever been there, you'll know that it is just a big Chinese shopping mall. And what do you usually find in a Chinese shopping center? Bootleg kits. And I found tons of Gundam Wing bootleg kits. I was walking down, I saw them, I was with my mom, and she's like, do you like the one with the angel wings? I said, no, I want the one with the devil wings. And she said, well, they're cheap enough because they're bootlegs, let's just get them both. And that's how it started. There you go. And finally from Ray Lee, what do you think of pop figures? Living in Canada, I feel it's a cheap way to satisfy my figure collecting thrust. Your figure collecting thrust? What's a figure collecting thrust? I have to see that. 
Uh, anyways, pop figures. I think pop figures are harmless. I mean, hey, I have one it's called Diva. She's pretty cool. I actually don't think pop figures are meant for, you know, toy collectors or those of us who are into those, the harder core toy collecting scene. I mean, like if you're watching this video, I don't really think pops are made for you. Pops are definitely made for more mainstream audiences or people who don't really collect toys, but sometimes or every now and then they feel the urge to buy something to represent a, a, a thing they like. You know, I work in or I've worked in a lot of different office or professional office settings and a very common theme. And I think anyone who's ever worked in an office can attest to this is that people like to put stuff on their desk or on their cubicle. And more often than not, it's going to be a pop figure because they're just easy to get a hold of. And there's every character. I mean, the amount of Game of Thrones pop figures I have seen on cubicles is insane, but they're always conversation starters and they look cool. And no, they're not super cool collector toys, but they're always conversation starters. And hey, they they brighten up what would otherwise be a dull space. And I think they're totally harmless and they're fine. All right, and that's it for this episode of TV3. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if there's anything I missed or anything you want to discuss further, feel free to leave your comment in the comment section below. As for me, I'm going to go back to making some more YouTube content for this channel because we all know I've been lacking severely as of late. All right then, until next week, I'll see you later. Bye.